You are a warrior. 321 status. What kind of vehicle is it? You are the very best your nation has to offer. 911. Multiple shots fired. They're asking you to leave. Five. We need a bear cat. It's up to us. So 133. I need somebody that's got a visual of where the shooter is. You must be sound in mind, body, and spirit. 14, where's the officer down? I have a rescue helicopter that wants to land and help. This is the podcast that will make you the one. Copy running eastbound. The one that will bring everyone back. Trouble, we have shot fired, shot fired. Give me back up now. Because no one else is coming. We're going to have an officer shot. An officer shot. 100 block of East Street. Suspect is down. Suspect is down. This is the squad room. Uh, welcome, partners, to episode 79 of The Squad Room. I'm your host, Garrett Teslaw. On this show, if this is your first time listening, we explore how to become better leaders, better tactical athletes, better sheepdogs, better humans. Our goal is to honor our oath, display our courage in the face of adversity, and be a beacon of light and hope for others. Now, I want to be the one. To be the one means to be the example, to always travel the high road seek opportunities to serve, to hold respect for both love and violence, to acknowledge our unique position in the world, and to use it to spread light and hope, not fear and division. That, to me, is a warrior. If this is your first time listening to the show, thanks for joining us. For those of you who've been with us for a while, you'll notice a few changes. First of all, the intro right there. Obviously, the introduction is different. We have a new website as well, of course, at thesquadroom.net. But it's uh, bigger than that, and I want to take time in this episode to explain some of the ethos that will guide this show forward. Consider this the Squad Room version 2.0, if you will. All right, over the last few months, uh, if you've noticed, if you've been following, I've taken a little bit of a hiatus, some time off, uh, not all of it intentional, some of it uh, totally unintentional, but I intended to take some time away from the show to step back and think about what I wanted the show to be moving forward. Uh, And I've spent a lot of time uh, over the past few months thinking about this and how this show has shaped and it helped improve the lives of thousands of officers, uh, including myself, to be selfish and honest about it, but to how this show has helped thousands of officers and first responders improve their lives all around the world, literally all around the world. Over 100 countries are listening to the show, and I'm humbled by that support. And with that kind of support, Uh, I wanted to make sure I was doing the absolute most I could to give you, the listener, the most value out of the show that I could. This show has turned into something far greater than I ever expected uh, or ever hoped for. I've talked before that I I started the squad room because I wanted to listen to a show for cops about how to be better at navigating this unique lifestyle. And nothing existed at the time. So I figured... Uh, I'm narcissistic enough and uh, egotistical enough to think, well, why not me? I'll give it a shot. And well, here we are. 79 episodes later, um, some amazing guests have come on. Some of those guests are coming back. We have some uh, major guests in the pipeline and very uh, excited for all of those. But this all started uh, because my goal was and still is to learn as much as I can from my guests that I bring on and see how I can apply those lessons in my own life. I've been very successful at some things and not so successful in other ways. However, I know from the emails and the Facebook posts and downloads that many of you are succeeding too, and that is awesome. And even when you're not succeeding, this is a group that is trying. You're trying and you're putting one foot in front of the other. One thing I've learned about this uh, group here, and myself being part of that, but uh, us as a community... This is a group of officers and people who want to be officers who want to get better. Nobody listening to this show is okay with where they're at. And maybe that is physically, maybe that's mentally, emotionally, spiritually, whatever it may be, there is a goal that you have in front of you that you want to be better. And that has been really inspirational for me. And uh, I never expected that to be such a big part of the show. So I have in front of me a group of officers who want to get better. And what a great opportunity 
to create some more community around that. And that's why the Facebook group has started and a couple hundred members there already. You can go to Facebook and search for the Squad Room podcast group and join there. It's a closed group. And I want to bring this community a little closer because we need us. We, we uh, as, as a community of law enforcement officers, as a community of first responders, but also as a community of humans, regardless of what nation you're in, we need to be around the people that want to be better as well. You're the average of the five people you are closest to. I firmly believe that. And what I've seen from the show is that uh, we are able to ri- raise the tide of our own expectations of ourselves. Now, to this point, I've kept my personal opinion about many matters around law enforcement to myself, and that's been on purpose because I didn't want the messages of my guests to be tainted or missed because maybe you don't like what I have to say. And, uh, well, that's going to change. You're going to hear a lot more from me about what I think. And uh, why? Well, because it's important, and I think I can help a lot of you in your lives and your careers. And uh, it's going to take some time over the next few episodes and over the next few months to tease out this ethos that I want to share with you. I don't want to dump it all on you at once, but it's definitely something that I think is important. I think it's how law enforcement will succeed moving forward and how we can regain the legitimacy that we've lost with some of our populations. Over the past three years, uh, since I hit record on episode one, I've been exploring how to be better. Like I said, a better cop, a better man, a better husband, a better father, and much more. I certainly don't have it all figured out, and I still struggle with nutrition and exercise as one example, but I've walked a path that I know can help others. Because in the emails I get and in the advice uh, that we share back and forth, I see how it has helped some people improve. So I'm going to start sharing a lot of the tactics and tools that I've been using over the last few years that I've kept to myself because, well, I didn't want to put it all out there necessarily and um, get criticized uh, on the social media or whatever and didn't want to get flamed. But also, I didn't know if it worked for others. I was finding things that worked for myself and that I was able to put into action and put into uh, service and betterment of my own goals. But I didn't know if it would work for other people. And uh, I've spent time working with some people and realized that these things have worked for them as well and they're applicable to them. So why not share them if they're of value to a few people, they're going to be of value to dozens of people or hundreds or maybe even thousands. So I want to share those things not because I think that my way is the right way, but because it's worked for me and I want to help you if that is what that does. And that's the whole point of the show. Now, to follow along, this is going to take somewhat of a major paradigm shift for some of you. Uh, Many of you will understand right away and agree with me with what I have to say here. Uh, Many others will not. And if you listen to the show to this point, please just be patient and open your mind a little bit. And I think you'll get a lot of value out of the lessons that are coming in the weeks and the months ahead. Most importantly, though, is to keep that open mind. We're still going to have a lot of excellent guests. Uh, we've uh, We've always sought out top quality tier one guests. And I'm gonna go, I'm going to double down on the value you get out of each episode. A lot of that is going to go through the mailing list, so make sure you head over to the squadroom.net and sign up for our mailing list there. There will be a lot of um, bonus content that'll be given out to uh, the mailing list. I have said that in the past. I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to present all those things, but now I understand. The light has been shed on that for me, so uh, get signed up for our mailing list. And join. You can also text the squad room, all one word, to 44222 from your cell phone. You can get signed up from the mailing list there. It's just a prompt. You text the squad room, all one word, to 44222. You'll get a prompt back asking for your email, and boom, you're into the list. I don't track your phone number. I don't even have access to it. None of that stuff. It's just a way to get signed up uh, without having to free- remember to go to the website and it's .net, dot, dot com, etc. So. <sighs> In the last couple of months, there's a stark realization that has occurred to me, and it's something that uh, I've I've seen coming for a while, and it's something I see in the emails that I get, and it's the simple fact that no one else is coming. 
Look around you. We are suffering from a severe drought in leadership. And I don't just mean politically or even at a national level. I mean in every direction, from your block to your neighborhood to your town or city, your state, your nation, and every level in between. Or what about your family or your friends? Some of you might be able to name one or two real leaders in your lives. And if you can, well, count yourself lucky. But if you can't, but are, but if even if you can identify someone, are they a leader only in one area? A deacon at your church, for example, maybe he's a real leader during Sunday service, but do you know what he's like on Monday through Saturday? How about social media? There are lots of leaders on social media, men and women who seem to have it all figured out, right, on their staged and filtered photos. But do hashtags in those photos show the true person? Of course not. They get to edit everything about what they put out in the world. If they just lost their shit on the girl at Starbucks for fucking up their latte, does that make the news feed? No, it doesn't. We've been waiting for someone to take charge. In the introduction, you heard the announcer say, you are a warrior. He said it much better than I did. You are a warrior. That man, by the way, is a two-time Grammy-winning opera singer. That's pretty cool. Well, in today's society of space, uh, safe spaces and <laughs> snowflakes, this couldn't be more true. But what makes up a warrior? That's a major topic we'll explore, but the clue is in something that, they, uh, that also, the announcer also said. The warrior is the one that will bring everyone back. What the hell does that mean? Well, I love stories. And I love stories of warriors. And I love stories of ancient warriors. And that quote comes from a guy who lived 2,500 years ago named Heraclitus. That's not the quote, I guess, but it's teasing out or it's a, a play on a quote. It's a play on a quote from Heraclitus. He was a Stoic philosopher, a uh, Greek philosopher, way back in the day. He was one of the first Stoics. And he spent much of his time contemplating the natural order of things. And you've probably heard this quote before. I've heard it uh, in presentations before. But uh, he's describing a group of soldiers preparing for battle. And here's the quote. Out of every 100 men, 10 shouldn't even be there. 80 are just targets. 9 are the real fighters. And we are lucky to have them, for they make the battle. Ah, but the one. One is a warrior, and he will bring the others back. So here, Heraclitus is saying that only 1% of the population are the true warriors that everyone else relies on. Well, think about that in your work and your life, the job you have. You are the one. You are the one that will bring everyone else back from the battle. Well, this is figurative for the most part, but think about it some more with me. There are 330 million people in the United States, and roughly 1 million of them are cops. That makes us about 0.003% of the population. Those aren't really good odds, are they? So, if you are 0.003%, 3% of the population. That is quite the burden. But is it a burden? Well, it's not to the warrior. But here's how I think this goes deeper. I think everyone understands, you know, the, the, the hiring processes and everything that goes into getting one cop. When I, when I got hired, and this is just a <clears throat> personal example, but it's been shown and proven out through other agencies and experiences, and it's not just, it's anecdotal here, but it's, it's statistically valid. When I applied, there were 534 people that applied for my position, if I remember correctly. 534 people showed up for the physical test on the first day. <clears throat> by the time we hired, uh, by the time everyone went through the physical, the written, the background, the background packet, the psych exam, the physical exam, and all the other stuff that's required, and then went through an academy of six months, went through field training. By the time we had a fully functional officer, there were five people out of that 534. And what does that make? Just a shade under 1%. So out of those 500, there were five of us that were the true warriors, and we were there to bring everybody back. Now, back from what, maybe, is what you're asking. And 
maybe it is literally back from your shift. The goal, of, of course, of any of us is to go home at the end of our shift. And maybe it's our job to bring others back. But I think this is a, in bigger context. Think of this in a bigger sense of your community. You don't have to go so big as thinking about your entire country, but you can. And that's how I think about it. I think about how there are 1% of us who are here to, to legitimately fight for our country. And I don't mean partisanship and defending, defending the country in that sense, but bringing us back together. There's no group in my mind that is more positioned to be these natural leaders than us, than in law enforcement. The very nature of our job, the very nature of what we've been given, the very nature of what our departments and our state law has allows us to do means that we're a leader. You can't be in this job without being a leader. There are plenty of us, for sure, that like to shirk this idea and like to pretend that they don't have to lead, but this has nothing to do with rank. This has nothing to do with rank. Think about this. Have you ever been to a promotion ceremony where someone's been promoted to a leadership position? I'm guessing a lot of you are going to say yes. My argument to that is that that's incorrect. You have been to a promotion ceremony where someone has been promoted to a position of supervisory, uh, a super, a supervision, or they've been promoted to a position of management. But management and supervision and leadership are three entirely different things. I can go all the way into each of those, but management is the division or the the allocation of department resources to achieve a department goal or an organizational objective, okay? Supervision is overseeing those resources that were given from the managerial perspective or from the managerial input. Supervision is the overseeing those resources, both human and otherwise, to make sure that the goals of the organization are achieved. Neither of those things require leadership. Leadership has no rank. Leadership has no rank. Just because there's nothing on your sleeves or your collar doesn't mean you get to get away with not being a leader. You signed up for one of the... Let me take that back. Let me rephrase that. You signed up for the hardest job on earth. Do you think that they're going to give the hardest job on earth to any thing or any one but the most qualified the most capable the strongest both mentally and emotionally and physically of course not that's why we go through such an arduous process to get hired in the first place but aren't we missing a lot of opportunities to maximize our impact when we shirk our our need to lead my personal opinion is we all desire to be leaders some of us just don't know how Some of us may misapply things, myself included. But when we take on the obligation to become a leader, again, not just within your squad, within your department, but when we decide to become a leader in our entire community or in our country, our lives get better. We become better because we hold ourselves to that standard that we expect of our leaders. And if you look around again, you will see that our leaders are not holding themselves to that same standard. So, it's up to us. We are the ones, law enforcement, we are the ones who are uniquely positioned to be the leaders, to, to take the high road, to lead with grace and patience, but to expect more things from themselves. We can't expect, anyone who's been a cop for any amount of time knows this, we can't expect the general population to demand more of themselves. I mean, we could hope, but we know that's not going to happen. There are certainly people within the population who are admirable and leaders themselves and wonderful people. That's not what I'm saying at all. They're part of that nine. But we're the one. Now, think about this in a little more microcosmic way, too. What about your department? I already said that the people who listen to the show, they want to be better. They have a goal. They're not 
happy with where they're at. They, they want to improve. And to me, there's no mark of a better type of person, a person I want to be hanging out with, a person I want to sit and have a coffee with, a person I want to share a beer with, than a person who wants to get better. And I don't care what it's at, but people want to be better. And the people who listen to the show, I know, are those people. And you take that 100 again, and you take it to your department. And I bet you could probably tease out an accurate account. If you take uh, if 100 people, for the anyone who works in an agency larger than 100, smaller than 100, extrapolate this out. You take a random sampling of 100 people. I bet you could find 10 that probably shouldn't even be there. Maybe they're not crooks. They're not you know, bad people, but maybe this job just isn't for them, and they've just never connected with it, and they never uh, understood that maybe this isn't the kind of thing that they should be doing. And maybe they are corrupt. Maybe they are. You don't trust them. There certainly are those. Okay? There's probably another 80 who are plodding through life who have been burned out or are over it, who don't want to take on the challenges of coming to work every day, who don't want to get better, who who are just pushing a black and white and retired on duty. And maybe they'll handle the calls, but they're not adding value to the world. And then there are those nine who we all know, the go-getters, proactive, they come every day, And they're the ones that make the difference in the world. They're the ones that consistently show up. They're the shit magnets. They're the people that make good cases, write good reports, have a good attitude, include others. You're probably your FTOs, maybe your corporals and senior deputies. You know, the motivators. Guys you can look to to know that they're going to do the right thing. But who's the one? Is there one in your agency or in that group of 100 that encompasses all of those things, of po- the positive things. Someone who maybe is not only just proactive, but also compassionate. Someone who is capable of extreme violence, but uses it only when needed, and only from a place of love. Violence from a place of love? Yeah, that's going to be a big topic coming up. Love and violence, that duality. But stay tuned for that. So in those 100 people, there's nine who we're lucky to have. But there's only one who's going to bring everybody back. And on some days, maybe that's you. My goal is that to make that every day. To make every day... That you're the one who's going to bring everybody back. There's life or death decisions to be made. We have the ability to affect people's lives in enormous ways. We can do it in a positive way. We can do it in a negative way. The way I see it is we're peace officers. That's our title. So we bring peace with us where we go. And it may not happen within the first five 10 minutes or an hour may not happen for weeks. And there may be violence that occurs before we bring peace, but it's our job to bring the peace, not bring the pain, not bring the hurt, not bring the division or the antagonism. It's our job to bring the peace. And it's my belief that the one true warrior is a person who can do that Show others the path. Do it with grace and humility and a smile on their face. That's a tall order in this job. It's seemingly impossible at times, but it's not. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Squad Room. Now, I'm excited about our next guest, our guest next week. A man many of you know, a man some of you have asked me to try and get on the show, And he was fantastic about jumping on the phone and having a great conversation. Andy Stumpf is our guest next week. Uh, If you don't know Andy, uh, Andy was a lieutenant with uh, SEAL Team 6, is their 
nickname, but DevGrew. Uh, he was a uh, Buds instructor. He's also an accomplished writer. He's got a very popular podcast now called Cleared Hot. And he holds two world records in the wingsuit. The crazy little squirrel suit you jump out of an airplane or jump off of a mountain with. He's got the uh, highest altitude jump record, and he's got the longest horizontal flight distance record. Amazing guy. Um, what's unique about Andy is um, he's a blogger. He started as a blogger. Um, that's all right. That's how he kind of got out in the world. And he's an extremely articulate guy. He's always got a great opinion. I mean, not necessarily if I don't if I agree with it, but even when he. Uh, Whatever he says, he says it so well that I'm willing to listen. And I don't always agree with him, but I often do. Uh, But Andy Stumps, our guest next week, a fantastic episode. I wanted to share a little clip of that uh, interview with you now as a little thank you for getting this far into the episode. So here's a a little short snippet of my interview with Andy Stump. The goal, and my only goal, looking back now and leading the SEAL teams, was to try to leave it a better place than I got into. And probably the most rewarding positions I had were one as a buds instructor where I actually got to sit down remembering what it was like to be in the seats in the early phases of the selection and talk to guys and answer questions honestly and try to teach them and mentor them through and then as the training officer in my uh, my last position shepherding through guys with no combat experience all the way through a combat deployment and watching that tactical shift between being uncertain to incredibly sharp teeth. That was definitely the most rewarding aspect of it. But I only was able to do those things because other people had done it for me. All right, to make sure you don't miss out on that episode with Andy Stump, it's a fantastic interview. He was such a cool guy. Make sure that you get over to our website, uh, thesquadroom.net, and get, or uh, even better yet, just go straight to iTunes or your favorite podcast of your choice, a podcast player of your choice, and make sure you're subscribed to the show. Uh, that way you make sure you don't miss that new episode with Andy Stump. The next guest after that one, oh, I can't even, I can barely contain myself. Uh, and I can't, I don't want to tell you yet because it's a surprise, kind of, a, well, it's a cool one. It's cool for me anyway. Uh, but you'll hear about it uh, next week. So check us out next week. You can uh, follow us on social media at The Squad Room on Twitter and Facebook, uh, Twitter and Instagram. Uh, join our Facebook group uh, on on uh, the Squadron Podcast uh, closed group on Facebook, and of course you can always email me Garrett two R's two T's at the Squadroom dot net. All right, everybody, thanks for listening. Take care of each other and stay safe. <laughs>